Hello, welcome to Cartoon Smart uh, Training Series. Um, my name is Jeremy Hicks. I've uh, I've taught a few lessons before on some iPhone programming and After Effects, and today we're going to talk about iPhone, but we're also going to talk about programming the iPhone using Flash. It is totally possible. Um, it requires a, a little bit of work, a, a little bit of uh, thinking differently about how you code your project, but is uh, completely possible and uh, you can get great performance out of it. I, uh, I know this, I know of which I speak because uh, I just got done creating an app with, uh, with my partner at Pixel Pirate Studio. Uh, we created an app called uh, Yin the Master of Yo. It's available in the iTunes store now. Please uh, download it, uh, check it out, play it, have a lot of fun, unlock yo-yos. And, um, uh, you know, there's, there's levels and uh, we're going to keep adding more stages to it and uh, hopefully you think it's a lot of fun and uh, you really like it. But I, I did the whole thing in Flash and it all happened uh, because I started coding in Xcode and I got fairly far with it. I, I had the main gameplay running in Xcode and it was running great. Um, didn't really have to do a, a whole lot of, of you know work to get it to perform well. It just kind of did. Um, but we kept adding more things, uh, effects and, and different sequences and, and a lot of tricks and just different, uh, you know, just different things to really make the game unique and, and a fun game to play. And every time we um, we added those, or we were concepting, uh, do, you know, concepting some of those things and, and thinking about what to uh, what to put in there. It just every every one of those things just really made me uh, cringe thinking about. I don't know how I'm going to do this on the iPhone, but I know uh, after coding in Flash for ten years, I know exactly how I would do this in Flash. So. I said, let me just do this in Flash. It'll just be a prototype. We'll get the we'll get the game running, you know, exactly how we want it with all the effects and all the uh, the polish and and everything around it. And that'll be my prototype. And then I'll move over to the Xcode and just code it. Now that I know exactly how it works in Flash, then I can kind of translate it. But I just didn't have that vision and and, and the ability to see how it would work in Xcode at that point. So so I started coding in Flash and we're going along. And this is you know early in the year. The whole thing took you know over a year of development time. Um, uh, and so you know time was going on. I was doing it in Flash and everything was going great. And uh, uh, the, some of the new uh, updates came out for Flash. CS 5.5 came out, and so I, I tried it on the iPhone, and it ran horrible. <laughs> it, it crashed. It froze. It, you know, I got a blank white screen. I just, I, I had lost all possibility, all hope. I didn't really have much hope that it would work, anyways, out of Flash, because I just, you know, heard so many reports about it, but um, I just knew it wasn't going to run, and. Uh, I just had an idea, so I, I I fiddled with a few variables, a few options, and it actually ran okay. It ran better, and it didn't crash uh, right away. And I saw a glimmer of hope, and then I started reading some message boards and um, some different people saying that it's possible. And then uh, I came across some uh, some writings on Adobe's website and uh, some PDFs from the developers of of the ActionScript language and. And throughout all of this, I was able to just squeeze out a little bit more performance. And every time, you know, I would spend an entire weekend, and I uh, just uh, thank my family for being patient with me, but, you know, I'd spend an entire weekend just working on one little thing. And at the end of the weekend, you know, there'd be a little bit of an improvement, but that would just create a little bit more hope. <laughs> so after after a while, after doing that, and, and some major steps, definitely, uh, if, if it had just eked along, um, you know, throughout that whole time, I was just thinking, all right, I'm, I'm just going to bail on this and just go over to Xcode. And it wasn't really up until uh, just a, a couple weeks ago that I, I was certain that Flash was possible. Um, uh, after, after optimizing and finding some huge holes in my code and some huge programming loops and, and some overhead that I was creating and the way I was coding and just the way I was thinking about um, developing, uh, after after realizing there was a better way, uh, a more optimized, streamlined way of, of thinking about how I create objects and and code things, uh, it just it just opened up and it got really fast. And uh, I'm able to get 40 frames a second, and, and I'm able to do you know hit tests and, and sound effects and interaction and all of it just runs really smooth. And then and then we ported it on the iPod, and it ran slow again. <laughs> because it's a, a slower processor. So I, I went through it again and, and got it even tighter, and even faster. So 
the code is is still um, the code that runs this game is still not a hundred percent optimized. There's still even more things that I know I can do to make it run even better. And so what I want to do is I want to take you on a, a little journey of everything I went through, and we're going to create our own game. Um, so uh, as I'm closing this again, uh, you can find it Yin the Master of Yo. I've got uh, a URL here on the screen. Uh, you can also find it by searching Slap Host Games. Uh, definitely try it out, give it a whirl, and I hope you love it. But uh, the game that we're going to create is uh, going to uh, be based off of a previous Cartoon Smart projects uh, with the the Ninja. And um, this is just lesson one, so we've got a long way to go before we're actually making the game. But in lesson one, we're going to create a uh, uh, an image class a way to load in images and we're going to create an animation class and uh, again you might think well I can create an animation in about five seconds in flash I've been doing flash forever and I you know open up a movie clip and and do a little tween and, and there slap it slap a slap a logo on it and you're done well it's not gonna work like that if you if you run movie clips it's just gonna bog down the the performance so what we have to do is we have to uh, to code out everything um, all of the, the animation, um, going through each frame, uh, looping things, all that has to be done in code. And, and doing it through code allows us to optimize in so many different ways. So without further ado, I'm going to show you our final project for this lesson. Lesson one is going to look like this. So when we're done, we're going to have our ninja guy running, a, uh, running in this uh, sequence. And well, you'll be able to, uh, to interact and uh, Right now, it's just running on the desktop in a Swift, but uh, you know, of course, obviously, we're going to run this on the iPhone. But just to show you, um, it's running, and then we'll be able to uh, click or interact, and it's going to switch sequences, and then go back to running. So <clears throat> I know it might not look like the uh, the next Angry Birds, the next uh, app to uh, take the App Store by storm, but uh, but trust me. Uh, we're going to be writing a lot of amazing code and hopefully uh, open up your mind to uh, some new ways to program, um, some, some new variable types, some new uh, ways to not have to use event listeners. There's ways around that and uh, to just get uh, amazing performance so you can really make amazing games. So uh, with, without uh, further ado, we'll uh, go ahead and get started in our project. Okay, so we're ready to get started, and um, I'm going to just show you uh, how I work a little bit. I use a text editor called Sublime Text, and uh, you can download Sublime Text 2 for free right now. They're not charging while it's in beta, um, so it's great to try it out, and it's available for Windows and Linux as well, so uh, I use that. And uh, you feel free to use whichever text editor you're comfortable with. Um, I know a lot of people use TextMate. I was using that for a while uh, before I came to this. And of course, you can code right in ActionScript. Um, that's probably, or I mean, in Flash. Um, that's probably my least favorite, um, just because it doesn't have the the folder project view and um, a lot of other nice uh, little features that I've grown used to. So uh, for the moment, it's Sublime Text. Uh, we're also going to use something called Texture Packer, and it's a way of taking your individual sprite images from a sprite uh, from a sequence, a ping sequence, and pack them into a single sprite sheet. That's going to come in extremely handy. That's one of the major optimizations that you we're going to make for the uh, the iPhone, and uh, I just uh, I couldn't do it without it. There are other um, products out there, but this one's free, and uh, so you just can't pass it up. There is a paid version that gives you a couple extra pro professional features, but uh, we really don't need those for what we're doing today. And it also works for uh, CSS sprites, um, for different game engines, and of course for what we're doing. It'll give you the sprite sheet and the code that goes with it. So it's, a, it's just a great, awesome tool. So if you want to take a minute and download that, uh, I don't think it's. I can package it with the, the distribution here of, of your files, so uh, you're going to need to go to texturepacker.com and get it yourself. And finally, we're going to use a utility that uh, someone has put together. It's called High Res Stats. Um, it can be found on GitHub. Here's the URL, github.com slash mrdube slash high res stats. Um, 
and this allows us to uh, see into what's going on with the Flash movie as we publish it out. So uh, we'll turn it on uh, right away so we can start to see it in use and we'll see what kind of performance we're getting as far as the, uh, the frame rate and um, uh, the memory usage of the application, which is uh, very, very important to, to monitor and to watch. So um, without uh, much, much else, we'll uh, just go ahead and get to And so with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so we can move these out of the way. And I'll bring up the text editor. This is Sublime. So, uh, oh, and the files are going to be in this lesson one. And they'll be in the source files is where we're going to work. So there's lesson one FLA and the action script file, which right now is empty. Uh, there's a utils folder. And in there right now is just that stats class that I showed you. And, uh, We'll be adding some more folders in here as we go along, but um, this will get us started. And then in the assets, I've taken um, some some art from a previous Cartoon Smart lesson. So if uh, you've been following along for a while, you might have the assets, but uh, I've gone ahead and just pulled them out into their own separate FLA files, which um, is a it's a good way to work if uh, especially if you're working with someone else or if you're kind of working on the art as you're working on the programming, um, uh, it, it's really helpful to just keep them in separate files so you can uh, maybe put a version number after it or just keep track of you know any changes you're making along the way as you're continuing to work on the art as well as the programming. So uh, I've separated them out and we'll actually, uh, this is a good place to get started really quick. So we'll go ahead and open up Ninja. And uh, so if you uh, did the uh, previous lesson with the, uh, the ninja fighting the, the bad guys um, in the side scroller, um, this is our main hero here. And uh, inside of it is uh, different keyframes for different actions. And right now these are just movie clips. As you see, as you click on it, it's movie clip. And uh, what we need to do is we need to get the sequence out because, um, you know, inside of these movie clips are many frames to uh, actually animate it out. So uh, what we need is we need to get all of these frames out into a, a ping sequence. Um, you're, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, they're in a movie clip and we're working with Flash and Flash is all about movie clips. So why not use a movie clip? Well, and that's a valid question and... and something I was using at first, but uh, movie clips are very expensive. They, um, they take up a lot of memory and there's a lot of overhead when using movie clips. Um, I'll actually show you that in a little bit de more detail uh, once we get to programming. I'll, I'll be able to actually show you how we can see how much memory something is actually using and that's just a, a great way to get a grasp on um, the variables that you're creating, the movie clips or objects that you're creating. To, to know how much size is it actually taking up um, because there's a real hard and fast limit when you're working on the iPhone as to how much uh, memory and resources you can use. So uh, it's definitely something you'll want to have your, uh, your hand on the pulse of um, while, you're, while you're developing just to see um, when things get out of hand. Okay, so uh, what we'll do is we need to get these uh, the way, if you've never exported a ping sequence before, um, what needs to happen is on the main timeline is all of your uh, your frames need to be out here so that when you run uh, export uh, movie as a ping sequence, um, it'll just run the, the timeline through them and export them out. So as it stands right now, if we hit export movie ping sequence, uh, we would just get this one image. So we need to... We need to break this apart a little bit. Um, first, we can get rid of the actions layer. We don't need them. And uh, let's see. So let's just kind of peek into each of these keyframes here. So stop is just one frame. So I'm going to, let's see, the best way here. Since these are separate individual movie clips, um, 
I'm just going to keep them as a graphic. And uh, we are going to lose the tint on them. Uh, that's fine for, for right now. Uh, we'll just go ahead and keep it uh, as the blue instead of the purple. Um, so that's the one frame. So we don't need all these other frames. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, delete them. So I'm using uh, Shift F5, and that'll delete the keyframe, or sorry, just delete the frame that the uh, the playhead is at. Okay, so right there, there's the one clip for the stop, and then on attack we have uh, let's see, it's one, two, three, four, five. So we need to make sure we have uh, turn him into a graphic. And I'll count out, so that's one, two, three, four, five. And the key that I'm using for uh, stepping back and forth, it's a keyboard shortcut. It's um, uh, period and comma. So that's great. It comes in handy, um, especially when uh, the other hand is on the keyboard and you're, you're not by the mouse. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, because after that, yeah, it just goes back and repeats. So what we need are... Yeah, we'll just get rid of those keyframes we don't need. So that's one, two, three, four. Oops, one too many. Okay. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then on slide is just one. So we'll turn that into a graphic. And we'll leave all but one. We'll remove all but one. Uh, run is a sequence of. Now this is interesting. These two are um, identical frames, um, but all totaled there are 12 frames. So what we need to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and leave those um, second frames in there um, because this is part of a sequence. So that sequence is comprised of having two frames um, being identical. That's just part of the timing and the pacing of that sequence. So if I get rid of that extra frame inside of there and here, if I remove this frame, it would change the, the timing and the pacing of the walk. It would actually speed it up. And uh, that's not the way it was intended. So I'm not going to adjust that. So we need 12 frames. Was that right? 12? Uh, yes, 12. And I believe here we only have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I'm going to hit F5 without anything selected up here. Oh. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, and then I'll turn it into the graphic. So perfect. And then jump is just one. So again, I'll hit Shift F5 and get rid of all these extra frames. And I'll turn them to a graphic just so he is the same color. OK, so there's our sequence in its entirety. And all of this is inside of this one main movie clip on the main timeline. But like I said, we uh, even after everything we did, it would still only um, just export this one frame. So we need to actually get all these frames on the main timeline, which is really simple because we can just uh, select all and uh, do copy frames. I think that's probably, here, let me raise this up so you can see it. So I'm holding shift down, I get them all selected, and then a right click brings up the menu and it's copy frames. And back on the main timeline, we can actually delete him, select that empty frame, and then right click on it and do paste frames. And there it is, all on the main timeline. Now, um, this part is just uh, for organization. If you uh, exported this out, it would uh, it would export everything. It wouldn't chop off where it's off the stage. Um, and any of these actually, yeah, like this one comes right off the stage. Um, but just for my own uh, 
sanity. I like to uh, just have everything aligned properly. So I click this button down here, which is the edit multiple frames. That allows you to select many frames and edit them at once. So I'll hit Command A to select all. And you see here it's got every frame, every keyframe, and they're all selected so I can nudge them around. And uh, let's see. So all together they uh, are 115 width by 72. And I think our movie is yeah, it's 128 by 128. Um, Again, no, for no particular reason other than just being organized and keeping it even, um, I just like to pick a square number and uh, I'll usually make it, um, you know, uh, like a 128 or a 512. So just, I don't know, probably out of nerdiness. It really is no uh, real particular reason. So um, I'll just leave it like that and put them in center. Now, uh, I like to keep things on whole numbers. It helps the... Uh, the the, uh, the pixels stay sharp, so I'll nudge this to uh, just 12 and 23. Um, that is a little bit of a moot point because each keyframe is on its own. So yeah, for instance, this is 6240. Um, one of them is going to be on that even number. Um, I'm not too concerned if we uh, if we notice it not as sharp as we want it to be, then uh, this is definitely something to look into is um, if it's on a, a whole number or not because uh, it has to kind of do some math for it being in uh, in between uh, full pixels. So um, probably not going to be too noticeable here, so I'm not going to worry about it. But again, if you find that your art is uh, just not as super sharp as you want it to be, definitely one thing to check. Um, all right, so I will go ahead and hit save as. And uh, what I'll usually do at this point is I'll call it um, Ninja Production or you know whatever the name of the file is, dash pro production. Um, also, you'll see uh, I'm, I'm actually not going to include these. Um, I must have Flash set up to auto recover. So it's creating these files uh, in the background as a recovery just in case we crash, but I'm not going to include these. So if you see them, uh, we'll just ignore them. Um, okay, so Ninja Production. And then that's uh, my way of knowing that this file is ready to go. Uh, should I need to make a small tweak to it or re export the ping sequence uh, for any reason, I can come into the production one. And should there be a, a larger problem of or, or a larger update or, or just something that needs to happen on a, a bigger level. Um, I might go back into the original uh, Ninja file, but um, as it stands, Ninja Production is what it is. And now we can go to uh, File, Export, and um, I actually have my monitor set up differently. So my, my actual menu is on the other monitor. So uh, I do apologize. I'll be sure to update that. Um, next time I start recording but so you'll go to uh, file export export movie and this part I can bring up all right so we are in cartoon smart lesson one assets converted bitmaps um, I'm going to create a folder called sequences and even in there, call it uh, Ninja. And uh, as far as the format, we want ping sequence. And uh, we can just call it Ninja. We don't need to call it Ninja Production. Go ahead and hit Save. And then it brings up this dialog. Uh, we can leave the width and the height and the, the resolution. Um, as far as the resolution goes, this is a little bit trickier. For now, I am just targeting the the uh, the regular display, not a retina display, which is the higher resolution. Um, that uh, will will cover that in a different lesson. Which at that point, you will want to uh, re-export the files 
um, with a different setting. So definitely another good reason to keep the, uh, the production version of the file around so we can uh, easily change that. But um, yeah, so for now, we'll leave it as it is. Um, you definitely want the 24-bit with alpha channel. That's what keeps it transparent. So hit OK. It's uh, exporting here. And let's check out what we've got. So back up a little bit. Original sequences. Uh, did I? Oh, <laughs> I intended to put that somewhere else. Uh, looks like, oops, not going to work out. Looks like uh, original art. Um, yeah, maybe my naming is uh, not so obvious, but uh, yeah, I would like to, uh, we'll put it in the original. So we'll, it's what I had intended. So uh, so it'll be assets, the, the original. So this is the art that we just did. And um, the sequences that we make out of it and then once we run it through texture packer we'll put it in converted um, we'll also put sounds in here so uh, these will be the assets that will eventually make their way into the flash file okay so assets original sequences there we have our ninja sequence and there he is Okay, so this uh, second file is actually um, the first frame of the second sequence. Uh, they just happen to be in the same pose, but uh, you see going through there. And uh, yeah, so just just like what we uh, we noticed inside the movie clip, we have two that are identical. So 16 and 17 are identical, but that's great. That's fine. We'll leave it just like that. Okay, so what we actually need to do is we need to identify these sequences. Um, and it's going to make it uh, a lot easier when we're in Texture Packer and we export, export it out. So what we need to do is rename the files and just add in... Uh, the, the name of the sequence. So this one was uh, stand and uh, I'm intentionally making it a uh, capital capital letter. So stand and then this one's going to be uh, attack dot and in fact all of these are going to be attack And uh, you'll definitely see the importance for this um, in just a little bit. Okay, after attack was a slide. Yeah, so that's this is slide. Let me just make sure here. Yep. And that was yep slide. This is definitely one part that um, if, if it can be automated, if there's a way to grab the, uh, the name of the keyframes out and use those in the name of the file, that would be really awesome. But as it stands, uh, there isn't, and uh, so it's just, uh, just what it is. Okay, so nothing comes easy, right? All right, let me uh, copy this, run, run. Um, and was that the last? Yeah. Let's jump. It's that guy. Oops. Yep. So uh, this is uh, just part of the process of uh, getting from Flash. Ugh, I keep hitting Enter. Getting from Flash and uh, optimizing it. 
um, like I said, you're, you're going to have to think in a different way than uh, what you're probably used to with, uh, with regular Flash, where you can just, uh, oops, this one is jump where you can just uh, use movie clips and use tweens and, and all the things that Flash made really easy to, to make something uh, interactive and animated. A lot of those, uh, you really have to put them aside. Uh, we, you can replicate as much as you can in code, but I even found that uh, in code, some things uh, just were, were ended, up, ended up being sl choppy or slow. Um, just because it was too re resource intensive, and uh, and I was testing it on an iPhone 4, which is you know a pretty powerful phone. Um, so imagine if you have a, a 3GS or or an older device like that. So, okay, so we have those, and uh, what we'll go ahead and uh, save and close Ninja Production down now. I uh, Normally, I would go ahead and do the same thing for enemy because we have to have to go through and do that. But I uh, I will spare you that, and I know you've been uh, hanging on patiently. So I'll uh, I'll show you what all of our hard work has been for. So um, I'm going to bring up Texture Packer. And uh, we'll show you what that's all about and how that's going to work for us. Uh, it's just loading up. I didn't have it loaded already. Okay. Wait for it. All right, here is Texture Packer. So you'll have uh, your settings on the side here, the data format, we're going to use uh, JSON array and let's get our sprites in here. So uh, you can just drag and drop. So we have our ninja sequence and I am going to uh, drop that right into this area here called sprites. Now um, if you're looking into texture packer and you're reading on their website some of the features and you actually can drop a swift in there um, which is uh, it's pretty handy it would remove that step that we uh, we just did uh, however you do kind of have to do that step anyways because uh, here's the key important thing when you twirl down here uh, here's our files just as we named them and uh, as soon as we uh, hit export it's gonna bring in the name and we're going to use that um, to to uh, to uh, to be our object in ActionScript. So um, it's all tied together for a reason. Okay, so we'll go through here the uh, the data file that we're going to save out. Um, I'll usually uh, put those in the assets converted bitmaps, and so we'll call that uh, Ninja. And it'll autofill the uh, texture file, which is our ping file. And uh, we'll leave the texture format as ping. And the image format, we'll leave it as uh, RGBA8888. Um, okay, so in the geometry section, um, auto size is going to uh, use, it'll automatically uh, pick the size of the sprite image. If we turn that off, then our image would be 2048 by 1024 or whatever we set here um, and just leaving all this blank space. Um, in some systems that's crucial or that makes a difference in, in what we're doing. It doesn't make a difference so we can uh, just choose auto size and it'll be the smallest size. Down here it's telling you what the size is going to be and uh, it too adheres to kind of that squared um, number um, so it's 256 by 256. And uh, let's see, we do not want free sizes. And we want to leave the scale at 1%. And the algorithm, oops, um, you need to keep it at basic. If you If you have not bought the Pro version, I believe this is one of just a few differences between the Pro and the 
free version is having max rect, which is uh, just defines the layout, but it really doesn't have any major effect. Um, trim. Now this is a huge difference. The way that I was um, before I found Texture Packer, the way that I was making my sprite sheets was just like this. If I had set the file to be 128 by 128, well, that was the size of the square. And so you had all this uh, blank space here. So there's just a lot of spare space not being used. And uh, what that meant is my sequences had to be very limited. They had to be limited to, um, because of you know memory constraints, you typically don't want to go bigger than 1024 or 2048 is is the max it's it's a hard uh, number so if your sprite sheet is larger than 2048 you are going to just run into uh, see this is what I'm talking about here if the the sprite sheet itself the file is uh, larger than 2048 you're going to run into some some memory problems uh, just loading the image in so I was trying to target 1024 uh, just to be on the safe side and that meant that if my square was uh, 128 by 128 well, there's only so many squares you can fit in. Um, however, it made the processing math really easy because all the, uh, the X and Y points of every square was uh, easy to calculate because it was just uh, simple math. So it's a trade-off, but definitely well worth it. So again, that is trim. You want that to be selected. So it's going to pack them all in there. Um, now, if you look closely, you'll see that they, they don't overlap at any point. Um, and then this enable auto alias, this one is just an amazing feature. I totally love it. I haven't seen it in any other program. Um, without it, it means that our files that are um, similar files get duplicated. So you saw the size jumped. It's now a bigger file, 256 by 512. And it doesn't need to be. These are completely identical images. So by doing auto alias, um, and you get this icon here where they're stacked, um, this is saying that there's, and you get even more confirmation over here, but it's saying that there's uh, you know, more than one image um, or more than one frame tied to this image. Um, so it's a great optimization. I totally love it. Okay, so we'll save this file. Um, just in case uh, it ever comes up and we need it again. We've got all, everything all set. And I'll say that in sequences as ninja. Okay. And we can go ahead and hit publish. And it's really quick. So we'll see in our, uh, in our files here we have converted bitmaps. And there... It, there it is. So it's uh, um, just like we saw it. So that's great. And it's ready to go. Now, um, what you need to do is uh, start using it in Flash. So we can um, we'll go over to Flash and we'll get started there. And we'll, uh, we'll come back and do the, the enemy later. So um, enough of some of the kind of uh, boring stuff. Let's uh, let's get to some of the fun stuff. Um, oh, I'll just not say if I didn't do anything to the enemy yet. Okay, so there's our lesson one FLA, and uh, it's just an empty flash file except for the uh, Cartoon Smart logo. And here is our lesson one action script file. It's just a blank file so we'll have to put in some of the uh, the basic stuff of course if you've uh, coded in object oriented flash before this is uh, familiar uh, if not you uh, you have to start out by setting the package and then uh, defining the class so it's public class lesson one extends And let this be the only movie clip we'll ever uh, officially use in our project. Um, except I'll show you a couple movie clips here just to show, to reinforce why we won't use them. But uh, this is the only one that's actually going to stay. Okay, and we'll create the public 
function lesson one. And uh, it's just a, a coding habit, but after every function, I put a, uh, a semicolon. Uh, and it, it really serves no purpose other than just a visual indicator that uh, I've come to the end of uh, a function bracket. So just uh, when the files get really large with uh, lots of functions and lines of code, uh, for me, uh, just having that little visual cue just uh, helps my eyes uh, spot out where the blocks of code are. So uh, that's all that is. And uh, of course we have to import a couple classes. So flash display, and uh, I'm just a fan of the wildcard. I don't go in and type out all the individual classes. I let the wildcard handle it. Um, we also are gonna do import utils, and this is referring to this utils class, um, or package rather. Uh, let's see, there's also the flash utils and and one more import flash sampler I'll show that in a second okay so I want to give you uh, just a quick quick overview um, about how memory works in Flash. Um, this is definitely not uh, an exhaustive look into that. Um, I would need probably a lot more visual material um, because that's probably really the only best way to explain it, especially uh, on a video lesson like this. But um, just for uh, just a point of reference, um, every every variable you create has a, a size associated so even if it's just a, an integer or a number or a string everything has a size to it so even if we just uh, did uh, var string oops, string string equals even that just a blank string we can trace out get size string and we'll run the movie. Oh, we need to uh, link up the FLA to the actual class, document class, so it's lesson one. And because, 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 lesson one FLA is right next to lesson one AS, uh, it just works like that. So that's how linking uh, class files to the document works. Okay, so trace that out. Okay, so what it's tracing is the size of the string in bytes. So even just a blank string is taking up 24 bytes. Um, not a whole lot for sure, but uh, as the application gets bigger and bigger and more variables and objects, all that uh, adds up. So um, again, just a quick point that uh, variables will take up space on the device. Um, let's trace out uh, just a couple other things just to uh, illustrate this point. So we're gonna get the size on a new shape. And we'll just do a couple of them here, a new shape and a new sprite and a new movie clip. So a shape is 228 bytes, a sprite is 404 bytes, and a movie clip is 440 bytes. And this is before adding any other properties to it, any uh, other variables, or uh, of course any display objects into the movie clip or the sprite. So um, just from the start, it's a the movie clips are bigger. So um, definitely one of the reasons why I don't want to use movie clips, uh, why it, they'll just be harder on the device, because these problems uh, exponentially increase as we add more and more and more of them. So wherever you can, uh, trim it down. Um, another uh, thing to look at is uh, event listeners. Um, every time you add event listeners, it's also adding more overhead to the project. So we'll get deeper into that as well. And um, we are 
Oh, yes, I want to also add just one thing in that'll uh, just always be there. Um, we're going to call it, I'll just put it here right now. Uh, start time is a number. And start time equals get timer. We'll run that. And we'll trace get timer minus start time. So we'll, uh, I'll do it, um, elapsed time. So that'll always run for, uh, for the duration of this project, um, just so we can keep an eye on how long it's taking to render the, uh, the movie. Uh, let's see, so just test it out, show you what it looks like. Elapsed time is zero, because uh, it's really quick. Thank <laughs> you.